Welcome to Leverage Point On Demand Training. In this installment, we will cover value messages and tags. The value communication tool, which is where you will complete the bulk of your value communication work, can be accessed from the Marketing Homepage and Value Models tab. Here we find our training case example value model. In our previous value modeling videos, we did all of our work from the value modeling tool, which you can access here. Rather than opening in value modeling like we've done before, this time we'll click the value communication tool link instead. Or if you're already in the value modeling tool, you can get to the value communications tool using the very last tab, next steps, and using this link. Whichever way you open it, you'll come to this tab first when you open value communications. You'll notice a lot of similarity in look and feel to the value modeling tool. Tab one, message, has a very similar look to the summary tab in the value modeling tool. The top half with the chart is identical. And you'll see a lot of the same tabs below. This is by design. It allows you to make updates to value drivers, price components, or variables without needing to go to the value modeling tool. However, when we look at the value driver sub tab more closely, you'll notice a difference. Specifically, this value message section here. When you open this tab for the first time, all of these fields will be blank. Value messages are one or two sentences that describe the economic impact in the customer's language. Often these relate to the key customer benefits. Be sure to utilize any existing marketing and sales content because they can be useful resources. Sometimes it takes a bit of effort to get the messaging right. So let's take a look at the value messaging in our case example. Here's a tip. In most browsers, you can drag the right corner of your value message to enlarge this field to see the entire message. Another tip is if you decide to copy and paste from another document, say Microsoft PowerPoint or Word, to just paste as plain text only, because sometimes hidden formatting codes can cause problems down the line. To the right of the value messages, you can see customer questions fields. These are optional information that can be useful in helping to guide discussions with customers, but they are hidden in your value proposition by default. Just a reminder that whenever you add new data anywhere, make sure to click Save. To see how a value message appears in a value proposition, let's take a look at the first value driver, Reduced Energy Cost. Look at the text under the value message box. Now, let's look at the text on the value driver slide for reduce energy cost. Later in this chapter, we'll show how you can preview your value proposition to check whether or not the text you've chosen for your value driver slide fits in the space allotted. Next, I like to talk about how to tag variables, notably key variables for the value proposition. Key variables, as you may recall, are variables that are chosen to display on the summary or value analysis page of the value proposition like we see here. A good practice is to use somewhere between four to seven variables that relate to the customer and which can best customize the value analysis to their unique situation. So choose carefully. Sales users can then save a version of this value proposition, which we will call a unique value proposition or UVP, once you have made these customizations. We'll talk about that in a later lesson. To make a variable display on the value analysis page as a key variable, you need to add a tag to the variable. There are two ways to enter tags. The first, which I'll demonstrate here, is inside the value driver formula. So for example, let's open the reduced energy cost value driver by clicking on the calculator icon. And we'll choose one of the variables inside the current cost of energy with NTG by opening it here. Let's pick projected average cost per kilowatt. To look at the tags for this variable, first I'll click the drop down arrow next to the variable and then I'll select edit tags. We see a couple of tags here already entered. The ones we'll be looking at in these lessons are the key variable tags and the before tag. Since this variable has already been selected as a key variable, you can see that it is pushed here to the value analysis page. Say I wanted to add another key variable from this list. I'll look at the tags for current energy use for HVAC in the same way with the drop down arrow to edit tags. This variable does not have a tag, so I'll need to enter one. All you need to do is type the letter K and select the type ahead key variables. 
then click OK. Now I'll save. Now I want to see a preview of the change I just made. I can go to the More button and click Preview as VP. I'll choose the Air Ventus Presentation View template. This opens in another tab where you can see a preview of your work. A pro tip is to leave a preview of your value proposition open while you work in another tab or window. Then once you have saved changes and want to see your work, all you have to do is refresh your preview page. Now we'll go to the value analysis page and see that we've added the new variable to the bottom of the page. Another way to enter tags is from the variable subtab. There is one right here on the message tab in value communications but you can also do it from a number of the tabs in either the value communication or value modeling tool. Let's look how we can find a variable to do both remove and add a tag. I'll click on the filter button next to the variable column name to do a search based off of the variable name. I'll search for current energy use and my list narrows to the key variable we just added. Click OK to go back to your now shortened variable list. Under the tag column, you can see the label key variable. To enter into the edit tag screen that we accessed before, just click on the tag name. Now if I want to remove this key variable tag, just delete the text we added before and click OK. Now instead of the tag name in the tag column, I see the word add. If I want to re-add the tag I just deleted or a new one, click on the button add and do the same process that we did before. Now I'll clear my variable filter to look at the entire list of variables. The advantage of entering tags from here is that you can see all of one or several tags by filtering for them in the tag column. Let's filter for key variables here in the tag column by deselecting all and selecting key variables. And here we have a list of our key variables. Another benefit of viewing the tags on the variable tab is that you can change the order of your key variables on the value analysis page. Key variables display in the order they are listed on the variables tab, so to change that, you can drag and drop them here. To see the changes you just made, click Save. And instead of clicking the More dropdown to access Preview VP, if you follow the pro tip, you can simply click refresh on the value proposition that you had open before. Going to the value analysis page, you can see that my key variables have been reordered. Next, I'm going to show you another set of tags that control display of the variables on the value driver page in the value proposition. So for example, in the reduced energy cost value driver, underneath the value driver message, there are three variables that are listed. Before I show you how to add these variables, let me stress that this is an optional step. You can complete value propositions without displaying variables on the value driver pages. So use your best judgment and seek the feedback from potential sales users when deciding which variables to add to a value driver page. This slide describes the variable tags used for the value driver page. There are three specific tags, before, improvement, and after. As you can imagine, if you have three variables to display, the before will display first, followed by improvement, and then after. If you want to display more than three variables, you can reuse one of the tags. So for example, two variables tagged before. The order of these will be determined by their order in the value driver calculation, which you can change using the reorder variables option in the dropdown on the value driver pages then dragging and dropping your variables to the order you would like. Be careful, however. If you have too many tags, you may spill over into the message or learn more box. So again, save and preview to check on this. This concludes this installment of the Leverage Point On Demand training. Thanks for watching.